So I have another problem here I found off the, uh, the miraculous internet. Um, this is uh, two balls that are traveling in a on a circular path. So two balls confined to move within this circular path. Um, one travels um, in this direction, and another travels in this direction. Uh, this ball here has a mass of two kilograms and this ball has a mass of one kilogram. Um, they each have the same initial velocity v, so a tangential velocity of v. Uh, they move along and they collide at a particular point and the two balls stick together after they collide. And we want to know the magnitude and the direction of the velocity of the balls after the collision in terms of v. So we want to know what is the final velocity of these two balls as they stuck together. So they're going to move along somewhere over here and go squish and hit together and then they're going to have some velocity. Now since this one has a larger mass and this one has a smaller mass we can probably guess, you know, just as a initial thing, initial guess that the velocity is probably going to be in this direction um, but let's just see by how much, right? So uh, what do we know about this, this system? This actually, hopefully this triggers some ideas about stuff that you've seen previously. This is very similar to a lot of problems that we've done uh, dealing with uh, regular momentum, right? When we had two balls on the exam, two balls coming along and kind of crashing into one another. Um, as long as the external forces are, are equal to zero, in the case of linear momentum, we, have, uh, we can still apply uh, conservation of linear momentum. In this case, so long as the, there's no uh, net torque applied to these uh, the system of two, of balls, we have um, we can assume that the angular momentum is going to be conserved, and so since there is no net torque and the only uh, force, the only torque being exerted here are are uh, internal when they kind of crash into one another, we know that the momentum, the change in momentum of our system, is going to be equal to zero. So that means that the uh, final momentum minus the initial momentum of the system will be equal to zero and we can write that out. What's our final momentum going to be? Our final momentum is going to be the moment of inertia of the, um, let's call it 2 for the 2 kilogram, we'll call this M2 and M1. So the moment of inertia of the second um, ball plus the moment of inertia of the first ball, those are going to be the sum of those two together times the angular velocity of the two balls together so let's call this like 2 1 something clever right that, that when they're stuck together that's the final momentum of our, our the final angular momentum of our system um, minus the initial quantities and we we're pretty sure that's going to be going um, to in this direction uh, so we can determine well we actually we don't necessarily even need to know we don't need to assign a value to that this, this omega will actually tell us the answer that we need for that uh, but we do need to choose uh, one direction to be positive and since counterclockwise um, like on an XY type plane is usually given a positive. We'll, we'll choose this direction, the direction that the mass of the second ball, the, the M2 is traveling, we'll choose that to be positive. So we're going to subtract the initial angular momentum um, and the initial angular momentum has two different pieces. We have the moment of inertia of the, sec of the two kilogram ball uh, times its angular velocity um, and um, let's put a little we're going to put a, a little vector symbol on top of those for right now. Uh, minus I1 times the angular velocity of the first ball, of M1, the one kilogram ball. The reason we put hats on top of them is that we haven't exet yet said anything. We haven't included any numbers about the direction that these are traveling. So, so far, these is, this minus sign is simply the minus sign from um, our change in angular momentum. So this is plus and this is minus simply based off the fact that we take finest minus initial. And when we go to plug in which of these is going in a positive direction, the angular velocity is positive versus negative, then we'll go ahead and plug those in and, and change these numbers. Um, so the moment of inertias of I2 and I1 are the same in, in these um, for, for both initially and finally. It's just that here they're kind of stuck together. Um, and so we can simply plug in those values. It's simply a mass um, at some distance from the origin. So we can plug those in. So the moment of inertia for the two kilogram mass is going to be M2 times um, R squared. Does it tell us what R is? It does not. So 
Um, let's just call, let's assign a value to this, the radius of the circle and call it R. Um, and it wants us to, an answer in terms of V. It's probably, if I had to guess, I'm going to assume that the R is actually going to cancel out since it never even mentioned it, but we'll see. We'll just call it R squared as, uh, to provide us with a, some type of numeric device. So these both have the same value of R. So here's just M2 R squared and M1 R squared. Um, and we can plug those in for each of the situations where those occur. We have the mass of the 2 kilogram ball times R squared plus M1 R squared times its angular velocity, omega 2, 1, minus I2, which is M2 R squared, times its angular velocity, which is um, that the angular velocity of each of these, in terms of the magnitude of the angular velocity, is equal to the ten tangential velocity divided by that same value of R that we had in our, our calculation for the moment of inertia. So we can plug in each of those um, they each have the same velocity in different directions, so um, I'm going to include this as v and include its direction. Actually, do I want to do that? It seems kind of strange. Let, let, let's go ahead and call this uh, the positive direction, so this is going to be a negative. We'll go ahead and include that. That's going to be v over r. Now this ball is going to be moving in the negative direction, so we're going to get a negative times a negative to get positive, um, a negative angular uh, velocity times this negative sign from our change in angular momentum to get m1 r2 that's simply the angular the moment of inertia of the first ball uh, times its angular um, angular velocity which is v over r and that's going to be equal to zero um, we were told that the mass of the second ball was twice as the mass of the first ball and when we have a lot of r's and things like that floating around um, and we also know that this um, is going to be traveling um, with some value of v over r as well. So let's go ahead and put, um, instead of omega, I'm going to be a little bit sloppy here, I'm going to call this v two v sub 2, 1. So this is just the tangential velocity of that divided by r um, as well. It's still in the same track. And we can actually cancel out, each of these r's is going to cancel out one of the r's in the top. And it doesn't really matter because we can see that we have an r here in each of these terms and a zero over here. We can divide by another r and get rid of all of our r's. Uh, because we're just going to have 0 divided by r over here, right? And this is all going to be divided by another r. Um, so those can all cancel out. Um, that's going to be 0. So we get m2, which we can plug in a few of these numbers. This is 2 kilograms plus 1 kilogram times v minus 2 times v plus 1 times v equal to 0. And... Um, if we multiply this all through, what happens? We get, this is, sorry, V21. So this is, um, I was like, whoa, everything's going to be zero. Um, so we get three V21. So this is the velocity of the objects together. Um, and that's going to be equal to um, just a positive V. This is minus 2V plus 1V gives us a minus 1v, which we um, subtract from both sides, or sorry, we add to both sides. Um, so our velocity of the two things together is going to be one-third of the initial velocity uh, that we had in those two cases, right? We're just dividing by three, both sides by three, and tells us that the final velocity of these objects, once they're stuck together, is one-third of the initial velocity, right? All of that just from a simple application of conservation of angular momentum. <laughs>